I when they uh, when I first teach them. But I uh, I personally feel like the next three days are gonna be the most important days uh, of the whole entire cohort. Personally, uh, the reason why is because if you can make beautiful websites, then uh, people will like you. Basically, I'm just kidding. But no, seriously, uh, if you guys can make and create uh, awesome UI and have it um, work on all browsers and um, can have that kind of support, then you guys are going to be in a good place. So uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of background on myself. Uh, I started here at Dev Mountain uh, about two, two years ago. I came through the After Hours program. Um, after I left uh, here, I went and worked for Paul Mitchell for about eight months to build out their uh, paulmitchell.edu website. And then I went from them to a company called Jane.com in Lehigh. And then from Jane.com to here. And so uh, I spend most of my time here at Dev Mountain uh, either designing new uh, interfaces or building them. And then obviously like teaching. So I spend a lot of time in the classroom as well. Um, on my spare time, I uh, run a company called Local Labs, which is a dev shop. We do a bunch of custom dev work. Um, so I spend a lot of time in the code, for sure. Something I'm super passionate about. Um, and so hopefully uh, we'll be able to have some fun with this. So just by show of hands, how many of you guys have, uh, have built, uh, built something using HTML and CSS? All right. How many of you guys have had just, some, like, just exposure to HTML and, and all that? Cool. So today what we're going to do is kind of cover uh, you know, what HTML is, like why, we, like why it matters, uh, how to implement uh, CSS, and kind of the approach to take. Um, there's a quote, I can't remember who said it, but they said, uh, CSS is like riding a bike if you were to light that bike on fire. So, <laughs> which, is, which is so true. I mean, like, I was up, uh, we did a, um, a lunch on a website last night, and it was 3.30 in the morning, and there was, like, some crazy CSS bug. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. It took me an hour to fix it. So, uh, we're going to try to avoid issues like that. But it still happens to even guys that have been doing it for a long time. And, um, the, the, the best approach and advice that I can give you guys when it comes to building um, any kind of web or software would, uh, is like the approach that you take needs to be clear and deliberate, right? Um, if you try to just go into something and you're not really like completely sure like what it is you're doing, you're just kind of like throwing code in there and you're like, I don't know, I'm just going to just kind of build this thing as I go, you're going to run into a lot of problems. It works out very well when, you're, when you know exactly what you're trying to do and you're thinking about it in a very micro type of way. So software uh, especially is like that because you need to start thinking about things in very small pieces, right? And you guys will, uh, will see that over the next you know, 12 weeks that you need to start looking at the little details of everything or it'll break. And so uh, HTML and CSS is no different for sure. Uh, yep. So go ahead and get, uh, get your editors open. We're going we're gonna to work through some stuff this morning. This is WebStorm. Yeah. So um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you guys how to start from, uh, from scratch here. So go ahead and create a new directory. Um, you can do it like on your, on your desktop or wherever. So I'm just going to call this one uh, HTML day one. And once you have that directory uh, on your desktop or wherever you want to put it, go ahead and open it up in your editor. So I'll just go ahead and open mine up here. And it's going to be empty. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create uh, a .html file. 
So uh, we can name it index.html. So how I usually will do it is just create a new HTML file. I think you can do the same thing in Atom, right? You can just right click on it. Cool. So I'm going to say uh, index.html is going to be the name of it. Does Adam automatically populate the like the markup like that? You can just go like this, and then tab or something. Oh, HTML and then enter. Okay, cool. Is it tab in Adam? Cool. So, uh, how many of you guys need help getting this up? It's totally cool if you do, just raise your hand. Cool. Uh, the language isn't, I'm, and I'm going to go over that in just a second. All right, so right off the bat, we've got some, uh, we've got some HTML markup here. Like, this is, like the, like, the minimal amount of markup that you would need in order to have your uh, page rendered correctly. The first thing that we see here at the top is this doc type. Uh, we're not so concerned with this, uh, with the introduction of HTML5, which is what you guys are going to be doing and what browsers are used to. Uh, Pre-HTML5, um, we used to have to declare the doc type, and all that means is we had to tell the browser what type of document it was going to be looking at, and it would handle different documents uh, with different sets of uh, regulations and restrictions. Uh, with HTML5, the only thing we would care about is doc type HTML. If we were to remove that, so say we were coding and we forgot to put it in there, uh, it's going to force our browser to render our page in uh, what's called quarks mode, which is um, quirky. It would be do weird things, so we don't want that to happen. So uh, that's the first thing we're always going to want there. So what happens when a browser comes to your code, that's going to be the first line it sees, so then it knows how to handle the rest of the code following. Then we see this HTML tag here. So the HTML tag is going to wrap your uh, entire document. Um, and then we've got the head tag here, which is going to be generally where uh, your styles and meta information about your website will go. Sometimes there'll be script tags in there, and we'll go over all that. So the title here, we could say uh, whatever, homepage, homepage. You'll notice I have a lot of typos, so be used to it. So I always like to share this moment with people. But uh, when I first started developing, this was like a mind-blowing moment for me. So I created an, like an index file, and I'm like Googling, like, how do you open like a .html file in the browser? I couldn't like find the answer, you know? And uh, finally, I came across someone's answer, like, well, you just click on file, and it'll open. I'm like, okay, well. So I like, clicked on it, and it opened it in the browser, and I like nearly freaked out. I was like so excited, you know, because I was like, it just opened up a whole new world for me at that moment. Um, yeah, come a long way. I'm going to go ahead and throw an H1 in here. I'll say H1. So you guys should get excited about it. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I expect you guys to be like, what? This is amazing. We can do all kinds of stuff now. 
and it's free. That's the other thing I loved about it. I was like, with my computer and my mind and some time, I can create something that people can use, and it cost me, it didn't cost me anything, except for, I mean, obviously time is money, right? But uh, I just find there's so much freedom in that. I love it. So let's get some, uh, let's get some markup in here. So we've got an H1 tag. It's a header. Um, we've got H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. Those are all different headers, generally speaking. The H1 tag is going to be your largest text. It doesn't have to be. I could easily, I could easily style uh, a paragraph tag to look just like a header tag. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It does matter, though. Um, this is like a pro tip that you should generally only have one H H1 tag on your page. Like, that's just for SEO reasons. Um, it's, your, it's not going to break your website if you have a whole page that has nothing but H1 tags on it. But uh, Google and Yahoo and Bing like to have only one H1 tag, so uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, let me go ahead and write these out. So we got H4, H5, and H6. So uh, how I do it is I'll just be like H2, and then I just hit tab, and that'll just complete it for me. Um, and I believe Adam will do the same thing. When you do it with other brackets like that, or like this. And then we've got, uh, what else? We've got P tag. Anybody know what a P tag is? Paragraph tag. That's right. We've got uh, inputs, right? So if we wanted to uh, have an input on the page, like a form that someone was going to sign into. It'd look like that, right? There's a little form there. If you guys don't want to write all this stuff out, that's fine. Um, generally, when I teach, I, I like people to be in the code as much as possible. Um, when I was learning, that was really helpful to be like actually coding. P tag, yo. All right, so these are all like containers to hold our content, right? We've got headers that are there to. Um, have a header generally, just like in like if we were to do uh, like a Word document and we were writing something out and we had a title, we wanted it to be bold, we put that in the header. Uh, we've got a P tag to hold all of our content, all of our paragraph content, um, and then we've got the also famous div, right? What's a div? So I like to think of a div as uh, a container, like a block, that's going to hold all of my stuff in it. So we can think of this as saying, I'm going to have an H1 tag in here, and this will be my header. Have a P tag under that, a bunch of stuff about my website. Wow, oh, I can't type right now. So that's exactly like how I think about it. It's the container that holds all of my content together. So if I had a header, a P tag, I might have another div in here that's going to have uh, some image in it. Right? So now what we've got is we've got a container that's holding all of our stuff. And I can then take that container and move it somewhere on my page, and the things that are inside of it will generally go with it. Um, there are times that the things inside do not go with it, and that can be frustrating. Uh, 
uh, similar to the div, we have a section tag. And I'll go over, we're gonna go over all these more in depth when we actually build out uh, a design here in a little bit. We also have an article and a side. We've got a header, a footer, a nav, I'm probably missing a couple. We've got a main tag. So the alt tag is used for if the image, well, a couple reasons. One, if the image doesn't get rendered, say like it fails, uh, it'll have like a placeholder text there, letting the user know like what it is. It's also really effective for people that have disabilities and can't, and can't see the image anyways, so maybe they're blind. Uh, a screen reader could read that out to them. So we, we would put something in there like, um, like this was a main image, like a profile image, we put profile image. And then maybe uh, the name of the person, something like that. So a lot of what I'm going to teach you today uh, focuses around this whole concept of, uh, of accessibility and uh, usability. So accessibility meaning we're going to try to make our websites uh, as usable by as many people as possible, and that includes people that have disabilities that can't see, you know, that might not be able to hear or, or things like that. You know, that we're going to need to help like help the websites uh, facilitate the tools that they have, and how we do that is by marking up our uh, our HTML in uh, ways that machines can make more sense of it when it reads it. So one of the best ways that I like to do that is using these semantic markups here. So all of these are exactly the same, except for browsers and screen readers will treat them different because of what type they are. So what I mean by that is a header and a footer might get treated a little bit differently than a section or an article or a nav or a main tag. But as far as the way that they look on the page, you won't be able to tell any difference between one or the other. Really, a lot of it just comes down to when the page is being rendered and crawled by some sort of a, a, a robot or a crawler or some sort of, of a screen reader, it'll look at those, uh, the types of whatever type of tag it is and then treat the content in there a little bit differently. So. When I start to uh, first code out a site, usually what I'll do is say, okay, I'm gonna do a main, a main tag. And I usually will put role equals main here. So what this is gonna tell the screen reader is that everything that's within this main tag right here is the main content. I might throw a header outside that. And if I'm going too fast for you guys, it's okay, I'm gonna go over all this stuff. Like if you, if you don't wanna type and have to listen at the same time, I totally get it, and we'll be doing more examples here in a little bit. This is kind of like a quick overview. So we've got the header, and I might have a nav inside that header. This nav might have a UL and a bunch of LIs. So the header will get, a uh, screen reader will come to it, or a crawler will come to it, you'll see the header, and it will start looking for uh, certain types within that container. Uh, generally speaking, it's gonna look for a nav, and it'll look for like some sort of a list of links. So we've got an unordered list here, and we could just throw some links in here like this. We could say, uh, you know, this is like home page. We could do a uh, about page here, contact, uh, blog. Some people think that you only have to have, that you can only have like one footer and header on a page at a time. Uh, that's not true, you can have headers and footers wherever it makes sense to have them. So like, let's say inside of this main content here, I'm gonna say this is, uh, this is the main section, let me back out here. So I'll say section, I can have a header in here also, if it made sense, and a footer in here also. In between these two things, I might have a div holding uh, a bunch of content. Okay. 
inside here I can have another nav as well if I wanted to. So you can put these, uh, mar these semantic markups anywhere that it makes sense. So if you have a container and it makes sense for you to have a header and a footer in there, then that's fine. If you only want to have one on the whole page and it makes more sense for you just to have the header running across the top with your navigation links in it, that's fine also. Um, if I was to swap out this header right here and say div instead, that's fine also. It's totally going to work, right? Uh, the way that these things look are going to be exactly the same, like I mentioned earlier. So most of the stuff when we're marking it up like that is for uh, SEO purposes and accessibility reasons. So if you were to do just divs everywhere, you could totally do that also, and people do it all the time. So it would change by the way that when the crawler's coming and indexing it. So what happens when a, when a crawler comes, it will find, uh, it does everything with key, key value pairs, which you guys are probably familiar with now with JavaScript and stuff, or you will be really familiar with it by the time you're done with JavaScript. So it will come and it will see a key, and then it will look for an associated value, and it will index that piece. And it will build out an index of your whole entire website. So it will come to that URL, it will see that URL, and then somewhere, some register somewhere, it will start adding key value pairs. And so it makes it easier for that crawler to navigate and make sense of your content when you've got uh, semantic markups like this. So it can actually read like, oh, there's a header, and so they'll like look for certain things. Versus if you had a header everywhere, then it would be like, I don't know. I don't, like, it wouldn't know how to prioritize them, you know? So by doing the semantic markup, it helps, it helps the crawler uh, give a hierarchy to certain content. Yeah. So if I wanted to style this stuff, how would I do that? Anybody know? So I thought we were doing like an inline style, right? <clears throat> all right, so what I want you guys all to do is go into your head tag and type in link. So what we're going to do right now is we're going we're gonna to connect an external style sheet from our HTML. So you can go dot forward slash, we don't have one yet, we'll do uh, main.css, and then we'll go create this here. So if I come up to my folder, I'm going to go do new, and I'll do style sheet, and I'll say main here. Okay. No, thanks for sharing that. Uh, no, just the link tag. So what, you're going to have to have these there. And I think in, uh, in Atom, you can just do, if you don't have them, you can just do HTML, type in HTML like that, and then press tab. And it will uh, autocomplete all that stuff for you, or put it in there. Yeah, it's not important anymore. It used to be. So I just tell people to keep it consistent so that way it looks the same, but yeah. All right, so what we're doing here is we're, uh, we're connecting an external style sheet. So what happens is when a browser comes to the page, it's going to uh, hit the doc type, it's going to hit the HTML, and it's going to go into the head tag. It'll uh, go line by line. As soon as it sees a link tag or any other type of tag that it needs to do something with, it'll look for a source. So right now the, the source is the href. So it'll come down here, it'll see the meta, it'll see the title, and then it's gonna hit this link, and it's gonna come right here and be like, oh, I need to go somewhere to get that data. Where it needs to go is to our main.css file. It'll go, get all that, uh, all that data, come back, and then continue to, to render our page. Yeah. 
Uh, a new file, yeah. Yeah, so make a new file, and just that one's going to be called main.css, and keep it in your, in your root directory here. So if I was to open this up in my finder here, we'll notice that I have an index.html file here, and then a main.css file on the same level there. Does anybody need help getting that connected? Okay. All right, so go to, uh, let's just start fresh, okay? I'm gonna drop all this stuff here. Go ahead and type main. Give it a role equal to main. And then go ahead and give it a class. Equal to main dash wrapper. Go ahead and copy that name here, the main wrapper. So inside uh, main.css. You're gonna wanna do dot, the name, and then brackets. So everything inside of these brackets are gonna be the styles that are associated with that specific class. So um, it's, re it's really similar to a JavaScript object. I like to even think about them the same, it helps me like add animations and do things with it. So if I want to say wit, that's the key. And if I want to do a value, I could be like 100%. That's the value, just like a JavaScript object. When you start doing JavaScript, it's gonna look like this. Var main wrapper equals an object. So they are really similar. So we identify a class versus an ID by the, either the dot here, or if I was to give this thing an ID equal to uh, wrapper, how I would uh, locate that would be through the hash. So I'd say hash wrapper. The main, yeah, this name. Yes, but uh, generally speaking, I, I try to use classes for everything. So um, the only time I will use uh, an ID is if I need to call action to something. So if there's gonna be like a button click or something like that, then I'll be like, okay, like I want this thing to be specific to this clip. Um, I don't, it's just something that I've just done. You know, I, I think it's easier to kind of reason about and then I don't have to worry about uh, um, like hierarchy issues. So, which we'll get into here in a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so you wouldn't, yeah, so, so I like to think of, uh, of an ID in a class, like pretty much just how I would think of an ID or a class in the real world. So if I had an ID, like my ID, that's specific to me, right? Like if you had my ID and I had my ID, like only one of them can be legit, right? Only one of them could be unique. Um, whereas a class, like who you guys are, right? We're a class, if I wanted to, like if I had some magical one, and I was like, I want to make everybody in here have a red shirt, you know, then I would give them a class. And so similar to that, if I have um, a bunch of elements on my page and I want them all to share uh, certain properties, uh, like maybe I want them all to have the same width. This is something that you see a, a bunch. So um, a good example of that would be to say on my main wrappers, I want to have this container class. And I want all of my containers to have a max width of like 1400 pixels or something like that. And so this is something that's used a ton, especially in CSS frameworks, is to be able to take a class and just put it anywhere that you want to something to have a max width on. And so that's a really good example of like sharing styles everywhere. With classes, you can do that. With IDs, you can't share styles. They need to be associated with just something specific, just one.
All right, so go ahead and uh, get this main wrapper in your CSS here. Give it a width of 100%. Uh, give it a height of um, 100 VH. And then I want you to give it a background of hash CCC. So what we should see on the page is a, a box that stretches all the way across the screen. It takes up the entire height of the view and is a gray color. Totally. Yeah, so I'm gonna exp I'll, I'll go into the um, like the the different uh, like measure units of measurement that we can use. So VH is uh, view height. It's something that's it's fairly new, and the browser support on it is really good now. Uh, so we can use it a bunch. And so what it says is basically like take up 100% of the view, and we could say you know 90 here if we wanted to, or 80 or whatever. So it's really considered kind of like a percentage, but if, if we were to try to give this a height of 100%, it's not gonna work. If we give it a height of 100 VH, it totally will work. And the reason why um, is because when you give something a height of 100%, what it's, what's gonna happen is it's gonna look to the root element of our document. Um, this gets a little like advanced, we don't really need to talk about it too much, but basically if we don't give the HTML tag a height, then the rest of the divs wouldn't know how to handle a percentage if we gave them one, um, which we'll talk about more later. So for today and tomorrow, we're gonna be dealing a lot with VH and like pixels and stuff like that. So we don't have to worry about any of that technical stuff till later. So I could also say 100 pixels. This is gonna be nice and skinny. I could do the same for my width here. I could say um, either 100 VW, view width, or I could say 100 pixels. They're very different. So if I did view width, it stays the same. If I did 100 pixels, it's gonna be a lot, a lot uh, thinner, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry man, that's like muscle memory too. If, you guys, if it drives you guys crazy, let me know. I just do it like. Uh, so usually what I'll do if I'm on a Mac, I'll go ahead and open up multiple desktops up here. So I'd have like my browser here on one, and then I've got my code on the other, and I can just swipe left and right. It makes it really easy. Uh, the other one would be to do Command Tab, and then it'll just select, like, it'll just give you an option to go back. So I do Command Tab, it'll say, uh, Chrome, command tab, goes back to WebStorm. It doesn't work when you have multiple desktops open, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do a live reload also, um, which we, or your, ask your mentors about it, and they can get it installed for you. Yeah, so, uh, so like say we were designed for mobile, which which we'll get into a lot more of tomorrow, you'll use like VW and VH a bunch. You'll just be like, take up just 100% of, of whatever the height is, right? And whatever the width is. And so it, com it becomes really effective. It, it, there are some gotchas for sure with it. Like if, uh, if someone was to grab their browser screen and like shrink it, then all of a sudden like your content will like smash together and you've got to deal with that. Um, as we get into more advanced CSS, we're gonna try to do everything without even doing a height on anything and then we'll let the content like dictate how tall something is, and that is really an effective way of making like, responsive design. All right, so we'll notice something right off the bat. Um, and it used to drive me crazy. I would get this little white bar that goes all the way across the top and down the side here. And I cannot figure out for the life of me like, why it would do that. The reason why is because the browser, out, like the browser out of the box comes with default styles on things. So right now our body, which is the uh, entire viewport here, has a padding on it of like, I don't even know, like two pixels or something like that. 
uh, your H tags, your divs, all those come with with uh, preset like presettings on them. So what I like to do is strip all those off. Like this is the, one of the first things that I'll do is just take all those default styles and set them to zero. There's a nice file that we can use. It's called reset.css. It's usually like the first one here on Google. So if you type in reset CSS, it'll be like that first one right there. You can click on this, and then we can just copy all this code here. It's not very long. What's that? Oh, yeah, totally. Yep. You don't need to. So you're going to put it at the top. Uh, generally, what I would do for, for today, we can actually, let's just do it right the first time. So you could put it at the top. But what I like to do is create another CSS file that's just reset. And that way, it just keeps the reset there, and then I don't have to worry about it clouding up everything else. So let's do that. So let's create a new file called reset. And then just paste all of that code in there. So if we look at this, what we're doing is we're saying HTML, body, div, span. We're going to all these different HTML elements. And I'm saying margin, padding, border, zero. Like I'm just going to zero everything out and start from a base. Yeah, I can throw it in Slack. Oh, yeah, we definitely do. Yep. And so what we'll need to do then is link to it just like we did with our main CSS here. But what you're going to want to always do is make sure that the reset file is first. The very first thing, you'll do reset. Because what would happen if you did this instead is you would write some styles in here. It would apply those styles. And then when it got here, it would immediately rip those styles out. Because it's just it cascades down. So it'll take the most current um, declaration of a class or a style. So I always put it first. Yeah, so the reset uh, is going to take all of those, uh, those default styles and just take them off. And so what that does for us as developers and designers is it gives us a really nice base to work off of. We don't have to worry about trying to fight these styles, like these weird margins and paddings, which I'll get into margins and paddings here in a second. Uh, we don't have to worry about like, trying to, to uh, move stuff around because like, they're not aligned right or, or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you'll, like, Tons of companies use the same reset file here. It's just probably just because it's easy to get, and yeah, it works great. Yeah, it's good on, it's good on all of them. So uh, I don't know why they don't do box sizing. Probably just because I'm not sure. But I always add it. We're gonna do, we'll do that here in a second. So yeah, I always add box sizing to my, to my site. So now if we come back here, you'll notice that that uh, white bar that was going all the way across the uh, across the top and side here is gone. So we stripped off that margin or that padding. Yeah. So I created I created a new re uh, new dot CSS file. I called it reset, and then um, I put all the code in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say just use this one all the time. Yeah, just get used to putting it in there. The other tag that's super important is this meta viewport. I'll share this link with you guys so you guys have it. DM13. Right, I'm official now. 
So that link right there, go ahead and jump in Slack, copy this link, and where we're going to want to put it is right in our head tag, right under this UTF-8 here. We're going to throw that meta tag in there. Uh, it's the web DM13. Is right in your head tag, in your HTML file. So this is a, is a really important tag. And if you forget it, uh, you will notice it probably immediately or shortly thereafter. So what I'm saying here is I want, you, I want the browser to take whatever the width of the device is. So if I'm on a phone versus like a desktop, clearly the, the widths are going to be a lot different. And so what I want the browser to do is take the width here, and that's 100%. Whereas if we didn't have this, uh, when we got to retina displays or iPhones where uh, it, like an iPhone 6 would be double the amount of pixels versus like an Android because of the retina display. And so what I need uh, the browser to do is even though it's double the amount of pixels, I still need you to just treat it as just whatever the width is and the height. And so by putting this viewport in there, it's going to allow us to do that. So it'll say width, device is the device width, and the initial scale, that just comes to uh, like turning stuff portrait uh, or landscape portrait and the zoom, how it handles that. So it's something that I always put there. So the, those two things are like super important, the, this one and this one. Yeah, like right away. I try to. Sometimes I'll forget and then I'll notice uh, pretty soon after that. Even like sometimes I'll be doing like a lecture and I'll forget to do that, uh, that viewport one and then my sizing is all crazy and it's off and doesn't look right. And then as soon as you add that, it'll, yeah, it would just destroy all your styles. You have to go do it, redo them. All right, so what I want you guys to try real quick, let's go ahead and just add, um, we're gonna add a header here. So I'll go ahead and help you get with the, the markup. So inside of main, go ahead and do uh, header. And we're gonna give this one a class equal to uh, main header. Now what I want you guys to do real quick is just take this here, that name, go into your main.css and apply uh, some styles to it. The styles that you're going to want to add to it are, it needs to be 100% uh, of the width. It needs to be, um, have a height of, I don't know, 100 pixels or so. And then go ahead and pick a background color for it uh, of your choice. And go ahead and take a stab at that real quick. Oh yeah, sorry. Just holler at me if I ever do that. I do that all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, no, you're just good. Don't be sorry. Stuff just takes time.
So I almost will always just copy the stuff. Like if so, if you go through my code and you'll see a typo, most likely that typo is going to be everywhere. Because what I'll do is I'll put it, and then I just copy it and paste it somewhere. And the reason why is because uh, I've learned over time that uh, the margin for error is a lot less on this just by copying it. So I'd rather have typos than have it not work. So I'll copy it over, and I'll go ahead and just paste it in here. So that's my main header. So because of its type, it's got a class on it. So we're going to use the dot. If this was an ID, then we would use the hash. So use classes for everything uh, unless you need to target something specifically. So if you're like, asking yourself like, when to you use one or the other, always use a class and you'll be in good shape. Unless you need to, like, once we, once we get into jQuery and JavaScript where we're looking for like a button click or some sort of an event, then we'll handle those events usually with an ID. Uh, there's, there's other ways to do it, but typically people will just listen or add an event listener to a specific thing. We'll get into more of that later. So the first thing I'll do usually is I'll say uh, height. I'll give this 100 pixels. And then I'll do my width is 100% uh, here. And then I'll give it a background color of, we can do like 999. No. Uh, so I use background for everything, even my images. Um, there might have there might have used to have been like a reason why you could use one or the other, but I'll use it for everything now. I use it so if it's color, I'll just do color. If it's an image, I'll put that in there. So, but you could do background dash color, and it would work just the same. Yeah, totally. Okay, sweet. So yeah, it's just a shorthand. Thanks. All right, so I've got this uh, bar going all the way across here. So you'll notice, let me go ahead and make this a different color here. So I've got my container here, and then I've got this header going across the top here. This white box over here is the actual, like, that's the body of our document. And the reason why is because I have a max width of 1,400 pixels on this, so it's only going 1,400 wide, and it won't go any further than that. If we wanted to center this on the page, what we'd want to do here on our uh, container, if you guys have that, I would say margin, and I just do auto. And that will give me even margins here on the left, and on the right, let me go ahead and get a body of background color so we can see it better. Say body, background, of light blue. I like gray. No. Okay. So the body, generally, you're not going to add style to the body. We we'll kind of leave the body alone. Uh, the reason why is because. The, the environment in which your code is being rendered can change. And so we don't want to fight against the body. The body is, like a, is a root element, and it's uh, generally good practice to not put styles on it. Uh, it. There are a few styles out of the box that I do put. Like I'll put, uh, like generally I'll, I'll have like a font family, like a, a specific font that I want on my whole entire site. Uh, I might do some uh, like font sizing and stuff like that. But as far as colors and heights and stuff like that, I never put that on the body. Just like good practice. What's that? Yeah. Yep. So this is the light blue. Blue. And then the main here. Black. Oop. And this.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. So uh, this is actually something, a really common practice that you'll see a bunch. Uh, people will stack, they'll stack stuff all the way on their uh, classes. So I could say, um, like, auto margin here. Uh, I might say um, uh, BG equals primary. And so what we'll do is we could go and get this auto margin. I could go into my CSS here. And instead of doing a margin auto here, I could create a new class and then have margin auto on that. And so it just allows us to uh, just stack styles. And you have, you could say, say you have like a base style sheet, like something that you use the same styles throughout your, all your websites. Um, you might set up something like this for like base stuff, you know? There are different classes. And so you can stack as many, as many classes on an element as you want to. You just need to make sure that they're separated. And you'll be in good. If, yeah, then it would be a container main dash wrapper. Oh yeah, yeah. So what you'll what you need to do is, if you wanted that, would be to add a container class to the main, and then in your CSS, what you would do is you'd say, uh, come down here, add container, and then give it a max width of fourteen hundred pixels. You got it? Okay. Uh, let's see, we have any mentors. Check it out. Is anybody else having that problem? Yeah. Yes, both are? Okay, let me check it out real quick. Yeah, change it, change it to a thousand pixels instead. Take, take the fourteen hundred off. Yeah, it is. So yeah, it was just that it's just your screen wasn't fourteen hundred pixels is all. All right, so now uh, we're gonna do a really common layout that you'll see on uh, websites all over the place where we'll have like an image on the left side and then maybe like a bunch of links on the right in our header. Um, I'm sure I can find a site, say Etsy. So Etsy's got like, their links are here at the bottom. They've got their logo here. So we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna say, we'll have a div over here and then we'll have a bunch of links over here. What was their question over here? So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So inside of my header, what I would do is I would probably have uh, an image tag. And uh, we don't have an image, so let's not do that. Let's go ahead and do, uh, well, let's do a div here. Let's give this a class equal to a uh, logo. And we'll just put logo in here. Then what I would do after that, I'd say nav. Inside my nav, I'd have a UL. So an unordered list is what that means, and then an LI. Inside each one of those LIs, go ahead and add an A tag. It'll look like this. Yeah, it's in, like, it's way easier. I used to watch guys on, uh, when I'd watch tutorials and stuff, I and mean, they'd be like, going so fast, and I would like hate them for it. Yeah. So uh, we've got this A tag here that's got an href on it. So this is gonna be, 
another location of another page is what an href is. So if I wanted to do uh, like uh, we do like HTTP s dot forward slash dev mountain dot com. Now inside of my header, I have a link that says dev mountain on it. If I click to it, it would take me to somewhere else on the internet. That happens to be devmountain.com. So this uh, kind of like takes us back to like just the original reason uh, the internet was created and sharing documents and being able to give someone a link to go somewhere. So really, when the internet was first created, it was just a, it was just a way to share information like documents with each other. Like I've got documents that you need, so I need a way to be able to get them to you. And so uh, the, Depart the Department of Defense, along with others, created the internet to be able to share documents. And so uh, one of those things they, need, they needed was a way to uh, have a hyperlink or a text that would take them somewhere else. And they did that by using uh, an href. It might even been called something else then, I'm not sure. But now we call them hrefs, and that will just point them to another location on the internet somewhere. Generally speaking, these links will point them somewhere within your website. Um, so like say we had an about page here. We might say forward slash about dot HTML. Something like that. We say home, might look like that. And so we put these links in there and will help people navigate through our site. So let's go ahead and get this stuff lined up. So if we looked over here, they're gonna be stacked on top of each other and they're gonna look kinda funky. So what we want is we want the logo to be on the left and then we want our links to be on the other side. So I'll add class to this, we'll say equals uh, mean nav. Put this inside of H1 here. So yeah, go ahead and put your logo inside an H1 tag. I'm going to go to my CSS here. Right under our main header here, I'll go ahead and add that logo. And I'm gonna do a font size. Equals uh, 30 pixels. Oh yeah, totally spelled it wrong. There we go. Sorry, okay. I'm gonna take that off. I was just trying to figure out like why it was being lame. All right, go ahead and grab that main nav here. Under your logo, your dot logo in your styles. Go ahead and add that there real quick. Now what I want you to do is I want you to put a width of uh, 
this is U600, I'll do 50%, uh, 50%. Height, we'll just give it a 50 pixel height for now. And background, um, should be red. Ugh, no. Whatever color you want to name it. I just didn't want red. It's too aggressive. So now we can see we've got our logo over here directly on top of our uh, main nav here. So if I went into uh, the inspect, which we will get into, uh, we're gonna get into this right now, actually. They, I think we're not supposed to like talk about it until later, like tomorrow, but I don't know how, I use it all the time, especially when I'm trying to figure out why something doesn't work. So go ahead and uh, go to your browser. Go ahead and right click on this, uh, any element anywhere on the page. You'll see this uh, inspect down there at the bottom if you're using Chrome, which I suggest you do, always. Actually, I don't know. Yesterday I was like, you wanna know what? I should go buy a, a really crappy PC and I should just code on Internet Explorer. So that way I'm like coding on the worst platform and if I can make it work on there, then it'll work everywhere. Instead of like coding on the best platform and hoping that it works on the worst. Oh man, I opened my, my code up in Safari last night and it was like not even the way it was supposed to look. I wanted to punch myself in the face. So, uh, yeah, so anyways, if you're using Chrome, right click, go down to inspect and it'll pull up this console here. Generally, it's like on uh, the left side, I believe, over here, or on the right side. Sometimes it's on the bottom. If you guys wanna move it, you can click on this little uh, three dots over there, and it'll give you the option to position it on the bottom or to um, have it in a new window. Sometimes when I'm using on a, when I'm in, on a laptop, I'll have it in a separate window, depending on the screen size, yeah. Yes, definitely. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put the URL in there. Oh, sweet. So it's already in there. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. You want this? That code? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Do, 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 16, boom. Okay, so here is the index. Got it for now. All right, so back to the browser. You can right click on that, that'll bring open this inspect here. What it's gonna allow us to do is look at the markup that's making up this page. So right now, if I hover over the main, I can see that's got a margin auto on here by this color here, and then it highlights the actual content here. That's super helpful when you're trying to figure out like layout issues or you might try to figure out like why something's pushed further down the page or isn't lining up right. By inspecting it, you'll, it'll give you all these details here that will help you adjust your content. I can then come over to uh, 
to here, select it, and then I'll go ahead and open up the styles. So here is the markup for it, and then here are the associated styles. And I can start to edit that in the browser. So if I took off this margin auto, I'll see that it changes stuff. If I was like, oh, I want to have a margin up top of like 35 pixels, I can see things change. This is super helpful when you're trying to do uh, edit stuff on the fly to get things positioned exactly how you want it. Yeah. Right here, this one. Because I have a max width on this of like 1400 or whatever. So it's just gonna look to its parent. Whatever its parent width is, will, that will become its width. Uh, if we look inside this main, then we've got header. And then inside header, we've got the uh, like navs and all that. So those are all children. The header is a child to main. And logo is a child to header and main. So that's probably a link thing. If it's only showing a reset, then you'll want to look into the head here and look and make sure your links are pointing uh, to the right place. So you have your reset first and then your main thereafter. Oh, here? It's only showing the resets here? Yeah, that's probably because it's not being linked right. I still think that's probably what it is. So is this what that looks like in your head? Mm -hmm. Yeah, reset first and then main after. And then make sure your file, like the file is named right. Typos are usually like the number one reason. All right, so if I, like, if I take a look at this nav here, we'll notice something about it that's kind of uh, uh, unexpected, perhaps. Uh, so we gave it a width of 60%, but yet it takes up the entire width of its container. So even though we can't see that, I, when I highlight it, I can see that there's this whole margin over here. The reason why is because that uh, nav class has a display block on it. So what that means is even if it's only 60% of its container, it's still gonna take up the entire width of its parent. So that could be unexpected for sure, and when we're trying to line things up next to each other, we wouldn't want that. Uh, so if we wanted to give this thing a, a property that would only take up the width that we needed, we could do like display inline block is what we'd wanna do. And we'll get into more of this, these display properties tomorrow. So I would do display, come over here, I do inline block, come back up here, hover over it, and then you'll notice that all that extra space is gone. Because what we're saying is, just take out what you need, don't take up any more than that. So it's really similar to if we had like a block, like a brick, and I put the brick on the table, the brick's gonna take up that entire width of its container. That was a bad example, Never mind. <laughs> just forget I even said that, because it doesn't even make sense. Uh, let's think of a good one here, I don't know. So you got, if you, yeah, inline block would be, it allows like two blocks to sit at night, like right side by side, right? So we got like inline. Whereas like a block element is gonna take up the entire width no matter what. Even if I was to give this thing a width of only 10 pixels, it's still gonna consume the entire width of its container. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it depends on how you have your style set up, but generally speaking, a good rule of thumb is that all of your section, like your uh, your containers, like your divs, your section, your sides, your articles, your main, all those are going to have a display block on them for sure. And some people will put even on their h tags display block, or sometimes they'll take those off. So it really depends on how you set up your, your styles. But generally, like, your container elements are almost always going to have a, a display block on them. And then after that, you just kind of need to inspect it and see whoever created the site, like, what they decided to do. Yeah. For that one? Yeah, go down. So open up that main. You got to open there. Oh, yeah, drop, click on that drop down right there. Little arrow. So there, it'll be, it'll be nested inside there. So right there inside header. There it is. So just nest them.
So now we've got two elements that sit side by side. So I'm not naturally going to do that. So let's go ahead and change those uh, display properties. So the first one we're going to want to change is here on this class of logo. We're going to want to go into our CSS here, do display, and then do inline block. You can copy that whole line, take it down to your main nav here, and just paste it in there. Now, if we come back over to our browser, we should be able to refresh, and we'll see that they're right next to each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll go to the, uh, to the end of the line, and I'll do Command-C. And that'll take the whole line. I can do Command-X. I'll take the whole line off if I want to. And then I just do Command-V after that. Uh, it should be the same thing for Windows. Control-C. Then we're out, while we're at it, inside of the main uh, dash nav, go ahead and say float. Float right. So now we'll notice that the logo's all the way to the left, and we've got this main nav that's on the right there. If I gave this thing a float left, it's going to float all the way to the left. Leave it alone, they'll sit right next to each other. Yeah, it's not saved. Yeah, that's like for sure. I've done that before a bunch of times. Just made a bunch of changes and did a refresh. And they were gone. Uh, no. Well, so, yeah, you just like copy it, paste it. Yeah, there might be a way to do it, but uh, probably not. You would have to do some configuration there. So I do all the time. Use it all, I, I use my inspect tool to make changes all the time, and I'll just take all those changes and copy and paste them back into my CSS. Take a look, let's take a look at it. So I'll take this inline block off there, and I'll also take the inline block off of here. So now if we come up to the logo, we can see that the logo is taking up the whole width, and so it's not allowing that container to come up. So it'll still float, right? But it's not allowing it to, like, to come up at all. So yeah, you'd want that inline block on there. These two here? Yeah. Probably because they have uh, a display block on them. They're just taking out like those line up right next to Try to get them like an inline block. Yeah, I have an inline block. On the link? Yeah. Where'd that go? Which one was it? It was the HTML. Ah. You can't even see my name there. It's because I got the A tags in it. That's probably why. 
There we go. Yeah, so now if you do inline block on that, which you didn't need to, but. So that's another way to target elements there. I can say a parent class. So if I went over here and looked, we've got main nav. And then I can go ul li a to target that anchor tag if we want to. This one right here. Oh, this right here. So that I did, I added a background to the body just so we could see. All right, so today what we're going to do is. So now we're going to work on this uh, HTML layout repo. So yesterday you guys got like, kind of familiar with uh, GitHub, right? So what you guys want to do is go to this repo here and we're going to fork it. So right here in mine. And then once you have forked it, you're going to want to uh, click clone and then copy this URL here. And so I like to keep all my projects organized, especially when you're going through so you can have a reference to them. How you uh, choose to do that is up to you. A recommendation for me would be to uh, go to your root here and maybe create um, like a uh, HTML class, or you could do projects. That'll probably get pretty congested, like mine. I have so much stuff in there. Uh, some way that you can just organize all your stuff for later reference, because you'll do stuff in class and be like, oh, I want to know how I did that, and it's nice to have a reference to your stuff. So the stuff that we did today, I, I would even throw it inside that folder as well. But once you have cloned this here, what you're going to do is see, like, you're going to want to CD into that directory that you create. So wherever you want to store all your stuff. You CD into. So if I did like an LS here, let me go ahead and make this a little bigger. You'll notice that, that this is my root. So if I open up my finder, did side by side. Stuff that is right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you want to keep it organized, I would create a folder. So let's do that real quick. I'll create one. This is going to be like my dev mountain stuff. And then if I did an ls again here, I see that I have that directory right there, that dev mountain stuff. So what I could do is say cd into dev mountain stuff, dash stuff. So it'll take me in, inside this uh, folder here. So as soon as I hit return on that, if I did an ls in there, it'll be empty because we don't have anything in there. So what I want to do thereafter is say git clone, paste that URL that I need to go get. So once you click this clone and download, it'll give you this URL here. You copy that and then paste it right here. So it'll be git clone, whatever the URL is of the, of the project that you want to make a clone of. Press return. It'll clone it into that directory. So now if I go ls, I've got that HTML layout in there. That's the same as like downloading a file and then dragging it into here. So there it is. So I, I could drag that to my desktop. You know, go to my desktop, and I can't find it. What was it called again? Oh yeah, right here. I take that back over here. I get in there. Take it out of there. Put it in my the mountain stuff. So essentially, that's what we're doing with the command line. We're just moving files and putting them in places. So I would close out the other project that you had open, unless you, if you feel comfortable leaving it open and open and having a node project open, then you can leave it open if you want for reference. But then you want to go open that uh, that new project. So let's go into that directory here. Dev mountain stuff, HTML layout. So 
you guys have this open, you'll notice there are three different directories in here. We've got a first, a second, and a third. Open up the first, and you'll see a PNG in there. So we can click on that PNG, and this is what it looks like. So what it's saying is we need to make our CSS and HTML match that image. This one is kind of hard to tell with they're after. I always tell people that because I'm not really sure. They've got, this could either be a div and another div and another div, or this could be a background color on the body like we did earlier with a div and a header. So however you choose to do it, um, do it, do it however you want. So go ahead and, uh, and hack that out for a little bit. So I think the styles, yeah, the styles are completely empty and the index.html is completely empty as well. So you'll need to do all of that skeleton stuff that we did earlier. We had like the, uh, Uh, yeah, so you can put your resets in there. I would suggest you do it just to get in the habit of it, for sure. So I would almost take all that stuff that I had in my other project and just put it in the head. And just make sure that my, my link tag was pointing to the right directory for the style. So go ahead and work on that for a little bit and then I'll, uh, I'll jump in and, and work on it with you guys here in, the, in like 20 minutes or so. Feel free to take a break. Feel free to go get some water or 